and most notably as amongst the leading architect of the modern Kenyan state. As one of the last standing heroes of our independence struggle, he had a special calling to execute the last chapters of the vision of our founding fathers, and he did this with surgical precision and a total disregard for what the naysayers thought of him. He finished the last mile of our founding vision as a nation, but he did not stop there. He helped us lay the foundation upon which future generations shall also build. But to this, I must add one more thing. President Kibaki was by all means a modest man and did not believe in loud shouting. When the limelight was shone on him, he tended to coy and hide. And this is because he found virtue and joy by doing the ordinary things that fulfilled his promise and purpose. He knew that he could not fulfill his purpose in the presence of cheering crowds, and he had to do this in the privacy of his space. And his desire to contribute, to transform our country, Kenya, in his quiet and secluded space, with no one watching, is what makes him a legend and a man of purpose. Fellow Kenyans, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to celebrate the man lying before us using three frames, Kibaki the man, Kibaki the leader, and Kibaki the visionary. I begin with Kibaki the man, and in celebrating his humanity, I want to pose an age-old question about our existence and that is, what is the true measure of a man? How do you judge a man after he has served God, his generation and country? Do you measure a man by his financial exploits or by how many lives he touched? Do you measure a man by the victories he gained or how he dealt with those he vanquished? Do you measure a man by how he handles losses, failings, and tragedies, or how magnanimous he is when he bags a win? Do you measure a man by how he treats his peers and equals, or how he treats his subordinates? Do you measure a man by what he started, or by what he finished? Do you measure a man by how he handled his finest moments, or by how he handled his lowest moments. If you want to know the true measure of a man, watch what he does with power. How he handles his opponents, how he treats his wife and family, and what he does with his influence. But fundamentally, as Martin Luther King Jr. taught us, and I quote, the true measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of convenience and comfort, but where he stands in times of challenge and difficulties." End of quote. In other words, the true measure of a man is how he behaves when misfortune hits. And the question before us today, who was Kibaki the man? How do you measure a man who was sworn in as president in a wheelchair? How do you measure a man who suffered ill health during his first year of his presidency and in his lowest moments he did not give up but he soldiered on? How do you measure a man under whose watch Kenya experienced our darkest moment in 2007, yet in this moment, President Kibaki shook the hand of his opponent and invited him to form government with him 
on a 50-50 basis, despite opposition from some of his own supporters. Kibaki, the man, had an incredible gift of tolerance. He had the ability to take in pressure and pain without showing distress. And this is why he was known as a man of few words. From his 50 or so years of active politics, he learned not to rush into judgment and decisions. He learned to lay in wait until the swollen river had found its course. When moments were dark, he chose to be the light. When reason was scarce, he became the voice of reason. And when hope was down, he encouraged us all to exercise the gift of long-suffering. And if a man is not measured by what he started, but by what he finished, then the record must reflect that the Honorable Mwai Kibaki finished very strong. The end of Kibaki the man can only be summarized by the words of Apostle Paul when he said this of his own life, and I quote, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, the race and I have kept the faith. This too must be recorded in our books of history as the finishing line of the Honorable Mwai Kibaki. He fought the good fight, finished the race, and he without doubt kept the faith. So your excellencies, fellow Kenyans, ladies and gentlemen, turning to Kibaki the leader, as we have heard, from the story of his life and times, as far back as July of 1974, the Honorable Mwai Kibaki was named by Time magazine as one of the 150 men and women who would become new world leaders. Six years later, in 1997, and nine years later, in 1981, the same magazine named him as one amongst 100 people with remarkable leadership qualities. So the world had noticed his leadership promise. But his leadership abilities were not only obvious to the editors of Time magazine and the world at large. They were also noticed by those close to him as well. His professor at Makerere University in the 1950s, Professor Keith Ingram, noted, if Honorable Mwai Kibaki had not joined politics, he was destined to become the first African president of the World Bank. A similar observation was made by the former World Bank president Mr. Robert McNamara, who noted that President Kibaki was one of the greatest economic brains produced by Africa. And this is not a wonder, because President Kibaki was also the first African to attain a first-class honors degree from the prestigious London School of Economics and Political Science. But how did his leadership abilities, celebrated by the world, translate at home? How do we measure Kibaki the leader during his 50 years of service to our country? At a very early age, the Honorable Mwai Kibaki knew that the biggest challenge of a leader is leading yourself. And to lead yourself, you have to be measured. You have to be disciplined and unwavering. He understood that a leader who does not lead himself 
will be driven by his difficulties rather than his vision. He will give in to pressure of crowds rather than the chosen path appointed for him. Such a leader will be pushed to make popular choices that please crowds as opposed to bold choices that are good for country but may be unpopular at the moment. This ability to lead himself against the noise and buzz is what brought Mzee Kibaki